a person is on top of a building that is okay let's say it's 100 feet tall So a person is on top of a building that is 100 feet tall. They throw a ball up at 40 foot per second and another one down at 40 feet per second. Okay. So let's say at the bottom of the building, there is a lake that is 60 feet deep. So we're going to assume that once the balls, they're going to go up, they're going to come down. And the one you throw down is just going to go down, right? And then they're going to go hit the water, and then they're going to slow down once they hit the water, which is really what does happen. When it goes down the water, the water will ex uh, exert a buoyant force, and uh, the ball will continue going down, but it uh, slows down, OK? So once they enter water, Okay, that said it slowed down at the rate of four feet per second squared. So that's their acceleration. So now we can ask some questions about this. Uh, we can ask, how high does the one that you throw up go? What's the highest height it reaches? What is H max for ball thrown up. B, we can ask, what is the velocity of each ball uh, when they hit the water? What is V balls when they hit the well, top, uh, top of water? And what will be their V when they reach the bottom of the lake? And Okay, that's good enough. We can answer these. Um, so we could uh, set up the picture here. So here's the person. This is uh, 100 feet. Okay. Now at this point, you could determine, okay, where, where am I going to set my x and y axis? Based on your x and y axis, that changes the initial height of the ball. Uh, usually I set it here at the, at the place where you uh, throw the ball. That's one of the easiest ones. Or you could set it here at the ground so that the initial height is going to be 100. Okay, you could do that too. Either way, it really doesn't matter. Um, 
if I put my x and y axis here at the top, then it's going to go up and then it's going to come down and then the final life is going to be negative 100. It's going to end up below where you threw it. You see? So depending on how you set it up, you get a different uh, answer. So if I put it over there, um, I want to know what is the height max. So which uh, equation should I use to find the height max? Uh, now you can think about and you, look at, you can look at those equations that we have. Uh, and think to yourself which one is the best one to find what is the height max when it reaches the top. Now, one thing we do know is that when it reaches the top uh, for a split second, the velocity is zero, right? So we know the velo velocity final at the top is zero. So which equation should I use? If I want to know the height max, it doesn't ask me anything about t, the time. And if I don't want to really know about the t, I could decide to use the one that's missing the t. Right? So that's... Uh, Uh, it's this one, right? The final squared is v initial squared minus 64. 1 minus 64. 2 times a, and a is negative 32, right? Uh, if I'm in the coordinate system of feet, then I have to do the uh, bridge system. Uh, so I have to use negative 32. So I could do that one, and then that will allow me to not worry about the time. So the final velocity is going to be 0. The initial velocity is um, 40, and then minus uh, 64. Y final, which, which is what I'm asking, or what I'm solving for, minus the Y initial is 0. Right? If you throw the ball from there and your X and Y axis is there, so Y initial is 0. So that one is, helps you to solve for y final, 40 squared over 64, which is 1,600 over 64. OK, what do you get there? Exactly. 40, you sure? 40? 25. Oh, 25. Oh, OK. Exactly, 25 feet. OK? So that y final is measured from here. So if the problem wants to know the height max, then you can add 100 to that. You can add it yourself after you're, you're done. So you can h is going to be uh, 125 feet. So the highest that it reaches is 125. Any questions there? OK. Now, I could have put my x, y axis down here. In which case, this would have been 100, right? And then if that's 100, uh, I would, uh, that would be 100. And then I would add 100 to this, and it would give me 125. So it would immediately give you the answer, which is 125. OK, so what is V uh, balls when they hit the top of the water? So one thing I want to show you from this problem is that the velocity of both balls when they hit the top of the water is going to be the same, OK? One of them is going, uh, one of them is going up at 40. The other one is thrown down at 40, right? What I'm going to prove to you is that this one, when it goes up and then it comes back down, it should have the same velocity.